Hi, this is Amanda Ingalls again, an international management student. Today I'd like to talk to you about foreign direct investment. Foreign direct investment occurs when a business sets up or buys a facility in another country for manufacturing or sales activities, aiming to provide a product or service there. The United States is the largest source country for foreign direct investment, and one example of this is a company started by a couple of entrepreneurs in 2012. Earlier this year, Andy Katz Mayfield and Jeff Rader, co-founders of Harry's Razors, appeared on How I Built This with Guy Raz podcast. During the interview, they delved into their professional journeys and the creation and evolution of their company. Their story began when they met in an internship. After that time, they kept in touch and bounced ideas off of each other during business school and during their early business ventures. Following his experience co-founding a successful online direct-to-consumer eyeglass retail company, Jeff shared with Andy his desire to start a new entrepreneurial venture. Inspired by this, Andy recounted his own frustrating experience buying razors from a drugstore, which subsequently sparked the idea of applying a similar direct consumer model to razors. The core concept was to offer high quality razors at a reasonable price, streamlining the purchasing process to eliminate the inconveniences typically associated with buying them from a traditional drugstore. These two began researching the idea and realized that making razor blades for shaving was very complicated. It involved special techniques of heating and cooling specialized steel with precision and a grinding process that was difficult to perfect. Significant engineering and technology are required for such processes, resulting in the production of the majority of razors in North America and Europe. In their search for a production facility, they found a factory that produced razors of a quality that they were satisfied with in Eisfeld, Germany. After extensive communications, they were able to work with this factory to design a razor that was customized to fit the handles that they had designed, and they committed to ordering 1 million razor blades in order to start their company. At the initial launch of the business, the razor blades purchased from this factory were sent to China where they were assembled to the handles and packaged. These were then shipped to New Jersey where other products to support their branding such as shave cream and shave gel and the kits for final packaging were also made. From here, the kits were shipped to the customers. This launch of the website was so successful that they realized that they couldn't provide the product improvements that these customers were recommending or produce products in the quantity needed to keep up with the demand of their customers if they didn't own their own factory. This was when they decided to raise the capital to purchase the factory. With this purchase, they became fully vertically integrated, allowing them to scale appropriately and provide their customers with products customized to their desires. Their quick action on this helped them fend off potential takeovers by competitions and enabled their brand to establish a solid foothold in the global market. There were some challenges they faced in this transition to becoming a German-American multinational enterprise. The most notable was the pace at which the work was done. There was a stark contrast between the Americans' fast-moving entrepreneurial attitudes characterized by their willingness to test things on the fly, a practice that the Germans viewed as careless, and the meticulous planning of the Germans, which the Americans perceived as slow and inefficient. Essentially, the Americans had to adjust to the needs of a manufacturing facility that required planning for processes to run smoothly. They also faced a need for more capital in order to support this rapid growth and to allow for adjustments to this dynamic market. Foreign direct investment, as seen with Harry's acquisition in Germany, has significant implications for both the host country and the home country. This particular investment involved acquisition of an established factory manufacturing razor blades. 
This means both capital from the initial investment and from further expansion of the factory were moving into the German economy. This expansion not only boosted employment for the local citizens, but also fostered a collaborative environment. The American team acquired valuable insights into the manufacturing process and technological expertise from the local workforce. Conversely, the German factory workers likely benefited from the management skills and entrepreneurial spirit of the American investors. Another factor to consider is the impact on balance of payments. Although Germ Germany imports the steel from Sweden for production of the razor blades, the export of these manufactured blades likely improves Germany's balance of payments. This positive effect mirrors the economic benefits observed in China's manufacturing industry due to foreign direct investment as highlighted in our textbook. Conversely, for the United States, the balance of payment might be adversely affected. This is due to the significant capital investment flowing into Germany and the fact that the largest consumer market for Harry's products is in the United States. In conclusion, the journey of Harry's Razors from a simple idea of becoming a global brand through foreign direct investment highlights the significant impact such investments can have on both the host and the home countries. As seen in this case, foreign direct investment can lead to technology and knowledge transfer, employment growth and economic benefits, but also brings challenges like cultural and operational adaptations to the new environment. The experience of Harry's Razors serves as a valuable example of how strategic investments and cross-cultural collaborations can drive business success in a globalized economy. It underscores the importance of understanding local markets and adapting to different business practices. Looking forward, such case studies are vital for understanding the evolving dynamics of international business and the role of foreign direct investment in fostering global connections. Thank you for listening.